Hi, this is Sindam Patel and welcome back to the video lecture series of the fundamental of machine design. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the application or the selection of the theories of failure. And we will also see one example based on this theories of failure, where you will learn the design of different component whenever they are subjected to a different kind of a loading and identify the how to use the, those theories of failure in order to design that component safely and accurately. So we will see uh, our next uh, component of the, the uh, this lecture uh, that is our next slide. The first theory which we are going to target is our selection of theories of failure. Now there are few points based on which you can select your th theories of failure. Uh, the first one which is uh, indicated in this uh, list of these uh, points is the uh, for the design of the material co mechanical component made of the brittle material uh, maximum principal stress theory is used. So maximum principal stress theory is applied for this purpose for design of the mechanical component made of the ductile material. Now mark this word ductile material maximum shear stress theory as well as maximum shear stress theory as well as the distortion energy theory is used. Now uh, whenever two theories are uh, there then whenever you are whenever you require to design a component a more little bit more safer okay safe then you will use this theory that is the shear stress theory and whenever you need optimum design then uh, this type of a uh, distortion energy is also used as you can see from this diagram you will see this is the combination of each and every uh, safe zone and uh, uh, here the maximum principal stress theory shear stress theory and distortion energy theory is represented but as you can see the maximum diagram uh, for the ductile material is uh, for a safe maximum safe diagram so the minimum area is covered by the ma maximum principal shear stress theory so this if your material is safe within this th uh, this region then it will be safe during in for the rest of the two theories and that's why this is more safer theory as compared to the other ones so the hexagon of the maximum shear stress theory is inside the ellipse of the distortion energy theory and for the ductile material the use of maximum shear stress theory is safer as i explained you it is safe so what we are going to see in the fourth point for ductile material use of the theory so distortion energy theory is more accurate and whenever you need accurate then you use the distortion energy theory for the ductile material the choice of the theory of failure depends upon the objective of for the design so if you are there are uncertainties in the calculation of the load the designer wanted to be on the safer side and maximum shear stress theory is used however in the if the load estimation is fairly correct then the designer wants to uh, wants the, the a fairly accurate answer using the distortion energy theory so these are the uh, points which you need to understand while selecting the theories of failure now we will see our next uh, uh, example actually uh, uh, the example data is given on, uh, you, through this yellow uh, patch uh, <coughs> yellow parchment as you can see the load on the bolt a bolt we all know the fastener which is known as a bolt it would look like this which is which might have the head and its body with a threaded region so this will li look like a bolt okay So this is our bolt head and threaded region. So that you can understand this thoroughly. Uh, of an axial, it, the bolt consists of an axial pull of a 10 kilonewton together with a transverse shear force of 5 kilonewton. So there are two different forces are applied. The first act, a force is applied axially. So first of all, we will apply the identify the axis. So the axis of the bolt is like this. So this is our axis. So pull force is a tensile force. So 10 kilonewton pull force is applied like this. Okay. So 10 kilonewton pull force. And the second force is 5 kilonewton. And this 5 kilonewton force is a transverse shear force. So this is a trans transverse. 
ट्रांसवर्स मीन्स वॉट विच इज परपेंडिकुलर टू द एक्सिस सो दिस इज ट्रांसवर्स डिरेक्शन सो ट्रांसवर्स शेयर फोर्स इज लाइक दिस दिस इज द फाइव किलो न्यूटन ट्रांसवर्स शेयर फोर्स ओके सो फाइंड द डायमीटर ऑफ द बोल्ट रिक्वायर्ड इन द शेयर स्ट्रेस थियरी सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द मैक्सिमम शेयर स्ट्रेस थियरी मैक्सिमम डिस्ट्रॉशन एनर्जी थियरी एंड मैक्सिमम प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस थियरी सो वॉट वी आर अवर इंटेंशन इज टू फाइंड आउट द डायमीटर ऑफ द बोल्ट लेट से दिस डायमीटर ऑफ द बोल्ट इज डी and uh, we can find this diameter uh, using three different theories and uh, we will select the best option uh, which can give you the better answer into your working condition so uh, take the permissible tensile stress is at the elastic limit so this is giving us the elastic limit value as a 100 mega pascal and the poisson's ratio is given as a 0.3 now we will see the uh, those steps first we what we are going to do first of all we are going to calculate the uh, tensile stress and the uh, shear stress using the tensile force and the shear force the force which is applied in axial direction pull force that is known as a tensile force and the force which is applied transverse direction shear force which is known as a shear force okay so the value of this force is also known uh, which is given as a 10 into 10 raised to 3 or a, a 10 kilo newton the value of the core diameter is represented by the dc now uh, in this equation as you can see if you simplify your equation will be in the form of the dc square the the below equation is also will be in the form of the dc square as our in, uh, our target is to our goal is to find out the value of the diameter of the bolt then we will leave this those equation as it is okay now we will use first theory that is principal stress theory or the maxi and uh, maximum shear stress theory for the principal stress theory and maximum shear stress theory you will require to find out the uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 now what is sigma 1 and sigma 2 those are the principal stresses the value of this principal stresses could be calculated using this equation where the sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau xy and in this equation there is the only one change that is the in place of the a, a plus you can consider it as a minus now if you if you just uh, substitute the values of the sigma x and sigma y uh, as you can see there is only one sigma x available in this uh, according to given data there is no other sigma force that is a normal force the the different two forces are given the first one is the normal force and second one is the shear force so due to one one normal force one uh, normal stress is generated and that's why the value of the sigma x is given but there is no other normal force and that's why we kept a value of the sigma y as a zero okay now if you put the value of the tau uh, which is already calculated in terms of dc now uh, you simply after the simplification you will get this equation in terms of dc also again similarly if you just alter the sign then you will get, and by simplification you will get the value of the d uh, sigma 2 in terms of dc now what we are going to do we are going to find out the values of those uh, according to the maximum shear stress theory and maximum principal stress theory so what does the maximum shear stress theory tells us so tau max equals to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 this is the equation of the maximum shear stress theory now we know the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 in terms of the dc so uh, this will give you the answer in terms of the dc and by simplification you will get this answer like this okay now maximum principal stress theory uh, according to the maximum principal stress theory according to maximum shear stress the maximum principal stress theory sigma t equals to sigma allowable uh, this is the equation for the uh, failure we are not considering the factor of safety as in the given data the factor of safety is not provided and that's why we have considered the failure condition or the maximum limit condition uh, as you can see in this diagram uh, uh, in this uh, steps the value of sigma 1 is pro directly inserted into this equation and the sigma allowable is given as a 100 so if you simplify this equation you will get the answer of the dc now this is the core diameter of the uh, this is the core diameter of the bolt we need to find the value of d 
the D could be found using the 1.19 times DC and if you find this out value then you will get the answer as a 15 mm okay now uh, using those this equation what we are going to do we are going to find using the maximum shear stress theory according to this theory the maximum shear stress is equals to the allowable uh, shear stress allowable shear stress should be less than the allowable shear stress but as you can see the allowable shear stress could be written as the 0.5 times the sigma allowable okay so uh, if you put this value then the unknown which is uh, remaining in this equation is uh, say dc and uh, after the simplification when you put the value of the sigma allowable sigma allowable is the uh, given data uh, which is uh, given uh, given as a uh, sigma t we have written it as a sigma t because they have provided the allowable tensile strength as a 100 Newton per mm square. So, 100 Newton per mm square is our given data. So, what we are putting in this equation is from the given data only. We are not putting it from anywhere. Okay. So, uh, if you simplify this equation, you will get the answer as a DC that is 13.42. Again, this is the core diameter. This is not a diameter of the bolt then the value of the diameter of the bolt could be used, uh, found out using the 1.19 times dc and if you multiply this value then you will get the answer as a 16 mm so as you can compare the value of the diameter according to the maximum principal stress theory is a 15 mm a maximum and value of the diameter according to maximum shear stress theory is 16 mm so this diameter is larger and that's why your bolt is safer according to the maximum shear stress theory as compared to the maximum principal stress theory and that's why we can say that the maximum shear stress theory is somewhat more conservative as compared to the other theories now we will see the calculation using the distortion energy theory as you can see this is the equation of the distortion energy and uh, uh, we have not uh, they have not provided the value of the factor of safety and that's why uh, we will not utilize the equation which co which uses a factor of safety we are going to use this equation that is the sigma 1 minus sigma 1 sigma 2 plus sigma 2 square plus uh, raised to 1 by 2 equals to sigma allowable the value of sigma allowable is given as a hundred we will put the value of sigma 1 sigma 2 as uh, calculated earlier in the previous slide and directly putting this value will give leave only one unknown in this equation and that is only dc that is the dc of the equation now if you simplify this equation you will get the answer of the dc as a 12.978 mm but this is the answer of the core diameter of the bolt this is not the answer of the diameter of the bolt and that's why we can calculate the diameter of the bolt as a uh, 1.19 times dc and by the multiplication you will get the final answer as a 16 mm this answer is somewhat similar to the uh, maximum shear stress theory but this is still a uh, lesser than the answer that we have calculated using the maximum shear stress theory and that's why we can say that the maximum shear stress theory is the safest shear theory for any ductile material so in this lecture we have seen the comparison of the three different theories uh, maximum principal stress theory maximum shear stress theory and distortion energy theory and we saw the points we have enlisted the points using which you can select the theory which is appropriate for your working condition whether your material is a brittle material then you have to go for the uh, principal stress theory and, but if your material is a ductile and if you are not sure about the working condition there is uncertainty about the loading then you must select the maximum shear stress theory which will give you the safe answer but if you are certain about the loading condition if you know your, that your uh, answers of your, your paperwork for the stress analysis and the force analysis is perfect and accurate and it will not deviate if you, during the working condition then you must go for the more accurate and optimum answer using the distortion energy theory 
we have also seen a example which could uh, which can uh, utilize the three different theories and find design the diameter of the bolt uh, according to those theory and we have compared the result as uh, using those theories also so i hope you will uh, be able to uh, understand the use of those theories and uh, we, we will see more application in the upcoming uh, lectures uh, till then thank you